I am a registered dietitian and a certified leaf therapist. Um, I am owner of A to Zinc Nutrition and I ran into Ron at a conference, I don't know, almost three years ago and it wasn't exactly love at first sight, but close enough, so that's how we ended up here. <laughs> I have to say he kind of dragged me into this Laura Quinn woman stuff. Uh, not necessarily kicking and screaming, but definitely uh, with intrigue and so I, I do not absolutely ever claim to be an expert in this all I can say is I work with several patients and I'll kind of give you some of that uh, story as, as we go through here um, so we live uh, on on hope right that you know I'll, I'll do my best to restore your life and get you where you want to go and nutrition is is my key uh, element here and I love it um, so those of you that are meeting me for the first time, you might figure out as we spend the next couple of days together, I'm kind of pretty much nuts. Uh, and I, we just get so excited about the power of food and nutrients. So I practice under the guidelines of integrative and functional nutrition, which is not foreign language to anybody here. It just means we look at the whole body, the whole story, how everything works together, all of the systems um, playing a role with each other. I specialize in food sensitivities, which is where the CLT comes in. I'm a certified leap therapist, and that just means that I've had special training in immunology that allows me to work with food and your immune system. So I, I got into private practice by accident. I started as a hobby about three years ago, just one day a week on the side. I thought I'd do this in my spare time, and it, it suddenly turned into something way more overwhelming, and I had to go into full-time private practice. And that, uh, Mashana is my assistant. She's She's the one that does all my dirty work. Here, take this, call this, do that. It's so amazing having an assistant. So uh, for the first little bit here, we'll talk about the assessment. So the very first tool I use is uh, what's called an initial symptom survey. And this, this tool uh, is really instrumental in helping me, well, assess the patient in a lot of detail. It uh, allows me to measure patient progress over time. So this first assessment uh, really ranges, uh, you know, across all body systems. There, it, it measures your uh, symptoms over a 30-day period. The last 30 days, there's no point really going a whole lot over that. And the number never really matters. So some patients score not with floor clinical toxicity, but some of my other patients score as low as a four or well over 100. I mean, those those patients with well over 100, obviously there's a lot going on. That Those are more complex patients, and that prepares me in advance for the kind of work that we might do. But like I said, it could be as low as a four or five even. It's a matter of whether or not that patient wants to live with that symptom that's causing that number, right? So it's irrelevant. The number doesn't mean you're more of a candidate or less of a candidate. I use this tool. Uh, it is follow-up, so there's another one called a follow-up symptom survey that we use to measure the last seven days. And this is how I know your body is responding and to what degree to the therapy, the, the nutrition therapy. So um, a lot of times we'll see, uh, with the, based on that rate of improvement, this is how we move forward with, with different, uh, either more rapid advances in food program or more slow advances in, in the food program. It's also kind of a motivation tool. I love it when I get the patient's feedback first. You know, tell me how you think things are going. And they'll have some things that, you know, they'll say they notice are good, but then I can run the numbers, right? And sometimes, it, you know, sometimes it's only 10 or 20% improvement, but sometimes it's up over 75. So that's really great. And then at the very end of the, the program, we run another uh, symptom survey. And that's kind of like the closing survey where, okay, so this is as far as we've gotten with the food. Beyond that, we have to look at what's left and what supplements are gonna support that or what other providers can support that. So I don't I don't claim to be an expert in all of it, but we clear the slate, so to speak, and then we open up the doors for what really needs to be worked on. So then the next component that I do, <clears throat> and it's all done digitally now, but I don't, and I didn't print one of these off for everybody because it's so lengthy, but it's an intake questionnaire, and this really prepares the patient to, to give me all the information. I, it's, it's important for me to hear the story, and this is, like I said, we, we look at social history, so do you have a social network? Do you have, do you have faith uh, in, a, in a higher power? Do you have uh, support systems like family, spouses, friends, things like that? 
um, and kind of a little bit what's your demographic. I want to know what kind of level of education you have so that I, I know what what you're going to understand and, and what I have to simplify, things like that. Lab values are really important, family history, uh, personal health history. This is the most detailed section where we actually look at how were you born? Was it a vaginal delivery or C-section delivery? How were you fed, breastfed or bottle fed? That all plays a role. Uh, what was your childhood like? Did you, were you a sickly child or were you a healthy child? You know, where did you live? In a city or on a farm? It's, it's kind of fascinating how all that stuff plays a role. Um, and then we go all the way up really into present day. So it's, it's the story up until then. Uh, how many surgeries have you had? How many um, well, medications and supplements are you on or have you taken in the past? You know things like that. Dental health is really important. I want to know if you have uh, amalgam fillings or if you have uh, root canals. Those can play a role. We may end up in the long run referring you to a, a biological dentist. Digestive health. We we ask a lot of questions. I want to know how you're pooping, what consistency it is, what color it is, how frequent it is. Uh, I want to know do you have symptoms after you eat right away or delayed. There's just so many things uh, that play a role in that, that digestive health is so important. So diet and lifestyle. So this is, what are you eating? Is it organic? Is it prepared for you? Is it, are you cooking? Who's shopping? Because that can make a difference. What kind of resources do you have for shopping? Um, so basically lifestyle, how do you manage stress? How often do you work out or not work out? Or what's your job like? What's your, um, what's your, what's your recreation style even? So all of that plays a role. And then I would think uh, the most important part of my assessment is really the readiness scale. If, if you can't uh, take on this program because it's a big commitment, you know, this isn't right for you at this time. So then we come in for the interview. I look at all of this before you come in and I have an idea. I already have my puzzle coming together, right? And so then the, the conversation that we have finishes putting that puzzle together. So I always start the story with the question, tell me, you know, when were you, when were you last well? What, when was that point in your life when you were particularly well? And a lot of times people are like, well, honestly, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember ever feeling really good. Not everybody's like that, but, but I'd say a majority of patients are. And then we talk about, okay, so at that time that you felt well, tell me the story since that time. So what's going on since then? And there's some key life events a lot of times or specific triggers with fluoroquinolone patients. Obviously, you know, the, uh, the, the drug plays a role. That's oftentimes a trigger point. But then, so here's what's kind of an interesting question that I asked specific to fluoroquinolone patients. So there's a lot of people that take this drug. How come you responded the way you did? What's your theory on why you have fluoroquinolone toxicity when 90 other people don't? And I like to hear their, their thought process on that because it, it helps me understand how much they have or have not accepted that this is where they are, right? And then I talk a lot about past or current interventions. By the time patients come to me, they have met with a lot of other providers already, which is great. I want to know what, what it is that they've done, what's worked, what hasn't. I ask a lot of additional lifestyle questions, uh, especially specifically related to food. Um, and then I let them do some, some dreaming. I want them to paint a picture. What's it going to be like after we're done working together? Okay? And then I definitely uh, have a discussion with them about their level of commitment. There's no, well, okay, there's a few patients in the room. <laughs> But there, yeah, uh, none, none of you have, none of the patients that are here have ever, have ever been my patient, but the other people in this room that have been my patient experience that this is the hardest diet any of my patients have ever followed. And so it does require a, a level of commitment beyond any other um, diet. And so um, I feel that out. If you're, if you're committed, we can keep having a conversation about what it is that I do uh, and how I can help you. So the, the last piece of what I do after all of the interviewing and the paperwork and all that, is then we use our blood test. And I, uh, there's two that I use, and it's the first is the MRT, the mediator release test. Uh, it measures your immune response via mediators to 140 foods and 30 chemicals. This is the gold standard test. This is the food sensitivity test. If you know of anybody else 
that is doing the IgG testing, please, please, please tell them there is no clinical utility for IgG testing. IgG is a measure of, of your uh, antibodies to a food that does not necessarily measure inflammation. So you, the more you eat something, the more antibodies you're going to have to it, whether, whether it causes inflammation or not. Um, I have some other information about the MRT here that I'll pass out, but um, I love it. What, what this does for me is it tells me which foods are your least inflammatory foods and which ones are your most inflammatory foods, and then we, we build on the diet from there. I like the chemical part of it because it allows me to um, overlay different, different criteria on the food. Um, and then the spectra cell tests, some of you might be already familiar with this because other providers use this quite a bit. Uh, it tells me what your intracellular values of, of different uh, nutritional components are, some vitamins, some minerals, some amino acids, things like that. And then, uh, yeah, it's a, and it's a picture of your status over about a six month period, so it's more of a long term uh, status for you. So that leads to groundwork for what's next, but we'll move on to treatment later. <laughs>